And welcome back to the Factor Uncensored. For anyone with a pet, you know how vital and important veterinary workers are, from the vet themselves to the techs that help them, and many more people working behind the scenes. But did you know these important people are at a higher risk of suicide? Suicide just because of the work they do. We spoke with a veterinarian and the organization working to cut this tragic statistic down. And joining us now here on The Factor Uncensored, we have with us Dr. Melanie Goebel and also uh, Dr. Amna Plummer to talk about the subject matter of suicide among veterinarians. Dr. Goebel, that's something I never really thought about. So what's the major concern out there in your industry around the country when it comes to suicide and veterinarians? Well, it's actually a longstanding issue in the veterinary profession and there's so many facets to it. It's just in the last few years that the word about it has actually gotten out and we're starting to address it within the profession. And there's a lot of different components ranging from the stress of day-to-day -day veterinary work and the uh, predicaments that we get, uh, that we're involved in when we're dealing with uh, oh, what's the right word? When we're dealing with cyberbullying, when we're dealing with finances, uh, we have no control over the finances of our clients. And our goal is always to help the animals. And a so lot of times- Really quick before we move on, when you say cyberbullying and then you say finances, are you talking about you guys as, as uh, doctors being bullied or your clients? Uh, let's be specific there, because this is a fascinating topic. Yeah, so one in five veterinarians have either been cyberbullied uh, by clients or from uh, animal vigilantes, if you will. Oh, um, oh. And that was actually a study that came out in 2014. I suspect that it's significantly higher now. And it has been attributed to, or some of it has attributed to the deaths of a number of uh, very prominent suicide situations around the world. Uh, so, yeah, it's... And when, you say, and when you say animal vigilantes, what does that mean exactly? Uh, that can run anywhere from people that have an agenda um, about animal welfare in one way or another, um, whether you're a large animal vet that works with cows and they don't think we should eat them, to uh, small animal vets that do some procedures um, or don't do some procedures to clients that become keyboard warriors when bad things happen. Uh, we have, we're still doctors. We do the best we can in any given situation, but we are not always, or while well, we aren't ever, God, we can't fix everything. Um, and even when we do our best, people aren't always happy All with right. the outcome. People can be mean, you know. Dr. Plummer, I saw you shaking your head. So have you experienced any of this? Certainly, certainly. I just actually had a case um, maybe a week ago, 10 days ago, we got a review that said his dogs got distemper and they were dying and they were malnourished when they left the clinic. Now, mind you, in order to test for distemper, it takes about a week. He had left the clinic four hours ago. His complaint was his dogs didn't mate while he was there. But that is kind of an irrelevant complaint. So to make it feel relevant, that's what he left. Those were the comments that he left. And his dogs were not malnourished. They were fine. But to make it seem like it was a big deal and we were such a bad place, you have to kind of write those kind of things. And these are reviews. These are reviews that stick with you forever. I mean, because they're, they're in black and white and this is how people find you. And, so. and people are passionate about animals. And if you're a vet, I assume, and if you're accused of abusing an animal, then that's <laughs> the worst thing that could happen to your career. Right, right, right. And all you can do is respond um, but it's still there. And, and, and a person that's looking for a place to bring their animals, if they read that, I mean, I wouldn't want to bring my animal if somebody accused me of their animals getting distemper and malnourished. And <laughs> But that wasn't, he was literally upset because his animals didn't mate. But you can't write that because that doesn't 
have the really relevance. <laughs> so. And of course, we just kept going on and on with this conversation. It just fascinated me, and they get more in detail right here on Monday night. We're going to continue that conversation with those veterinarians. We asked them how they are getting to those veterinarians in need who are considering taking their own lives as a result of being bullied and having financial problems. So make sure you check back with us on Monday night for that.